Welcome back to Jeremiah's Bible study here. We are professional. We're ready to go. We left off on Psalm 34, and uh, of course that was yesterday for me, but for you, you just click the video, and who knows what your time frame is, as we're looking at the middle of October here. Let's get going as we just rejoice together with you. It, as, uh, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. This is um, uh, it, the only name given under heaven is Jesus. There's only one name. And we do everything in that name, which means God saves, God loves to save, God wants to save, God, for God so loved the world that he wants to save. And it's available. And let us let us pursue and strain to enter into the narrow gate. And uh, let's get through that gate by pursuing righteousness and allowing ourselves to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Putting on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, your feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace and prayer and supplication for the saints and after after doing all of that we stand up the great the grace in which we stand standing on the promises of god standing we're standing and you stand when you're active and let's get going and the master said let your lamps be trimmed that means let's stay active here uh, as many of you can tell You've ascertained or gathered is the word you can use. Uh, we we work here, and, and you know this is a lot about a lot of work and discipline. You know, I watched a movie last night, and it was a little shaky. I, I can't watch anything other than my own movies. I, I I screen my movies pretty much. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, are you on fire? That's a good question. I think I am. We we have work to do, and work is fire, people. Okay, talk is cheap. And, uh, now we have time like Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, what's our goal here? Our goal here is for us to, to see ourselves at this point sitting around Jesus Christ, uh, Mr. Purity, and just sitting around and relaxing. That's really our goal here is to chill around the Master based upon your devotion. Your love is going to birth you a place right around the throne and uh, and we'll get to that later I did not bring the the template in here I have to start bringing my template into my new venue here my new room so that we can start referencing the uh, the, uh, the template all the time now we're pretty much done with most of the template uh, in terms of the heavy hitters grace mercy peace and rest and and uh, faith what is faith? It's confidence, peace. This, how many different kinds of faving? There's faving. There's different kinds of things that you have confidence in. The main thing that you have confidence in is your gospel message, that you're going to obey the gospel and you're going to be sprinkled by the legal forgiveness of Jesus Christ, just as the children of Israel did. And you're going to walk through your own wilderness here, and the Lord is going to teach, take you by his Holy Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. So we make a commitment, and then we go about fulfilling that commitment. We make a, we make a covenant, and we go about keeping that covenant. Got it? <clears throat> as we rejoice in the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we sit here and just anticipate getting the, as they say in America, getting the heck out of here, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and getting away from all these wars and these filthy people and and now it appears as though some of these Republican associates are, the devil's jumping into just about everybody now. It's, it's, getting, it's getting bad. Greed and, and capitalism, which goes bad. Capitalism can go very bad. However, it, it, it doesn't really bother us. Because you, you may have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. Well, you may have this whole wide world. What is that? The pearl of great price. He traded in the entire field. We're trading in everything for the love of Jesus Christ here. If, 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 if you haven't gathered that at this point, you need, to, you need to pick up on that. That we're here to trade everything in, in the field for the love of Jesus Christ. Okay? 
That's what we're trading everything in for here. We, we take it all, take it all. I don't you take everything. Just don't touch the love of Jesus. Leave it alone. I just wrote a new song, and it'll be available for those of you who are still still with us. We seem to have lost so many people. Um, however, few, many are called, few are chosen. The Lord knows how to bring people to my ministry. I don't really have to advertise. Uh, we, I just made a hundred, hundred or so business cards, and I need to start passing some more of those out. But you know, we, we, we you know, let's get active, let's get going. Um, and everything we do, uh, we're going to order some Bibles here. More uh, New Testaments. We're going to order some more of those, letting you know a little bit what's going on in, in, in most of the churches. You know, we. We buy Bibles, and they're obviously King James uh, edition. And I would prefer a red letter, but uh, these are pass-out Bibles. Let's get going. Let's get going. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Yeah, we're, we're very relaxed here. It's wonderful right now. We have this new venue. I like this new um, place here because it has nothing to do with anybody and keys and and, you know, is anybody going to disturb us? And can we use the sanctuary? Is the sanctuary clean? Is somebody going to clean? And, and all that's gone now. Do, is everybody, ha can't, you can't go to church because of some sort of mask mandate or something. Can't do this, can't do that. Now we're dealing with people straight up online with lots of Bible study and lots of Bible reading. And it's relaxing in the comfort of your home. No matter where you are, we can reach anybody. Um, we're reaching a lot of people in Japan, but they're not sticking around, but maybe they will. And um, we have a few from Mexico, kind of, but um, most computers now are in what country? The United States, and then there's, um, there's India, China. That's based upon population, of course. I think Mexico and Brazil... Germany, some countries are really into the computer, uh, into going online. Let's go as we look at Psalm 34. Now, we, we, we look at Psalm 34, as you know. As many of you may know, it's, it's, it's one of the most beautiful pieces of literature. Um, it is right there with the Lord is my shepherd, I have no want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the quiet waters. Um I, I have a lesson on Psalm 23, and I just looked at it, and we, we, we could stay there for a week and just sit and relax and listen to these beautiful words, just like here in 34. We, we, and I will bless the Lord at all times. And we just went through another monster, which is, happy is the man whose sins freely are forgiven, or blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, the Lord does not put your sin on you. Wow. And who? There's just too much. Psalm 33 starts out with a heavy two. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous. So we practice righteousness, and that's what we do here. And I will bless the Lord at all times. He shall continually, be, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. All of these are heavy hitters. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. Uh, does it get any better than this? You don't have any wants, you don't have any fears. How many people in the world could use this? And a lot of them is right there in their living room, and yet they still have fear and they still have want. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. There you go. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. There you go. I, I, I don't want anything good. And, 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 and let's broaden that concept out as we move on. It, it's difficult to get past 34. I'll be back to 34 in eight weeks, maybe sooner. To say this is not the, the, the tip of the iceberg, the, to say this is not some of the best stuff in the, this is, this is your Bible here, Psalm 34. 
this is where everything starts and where everything be where everything ends because to have no fears and have no wants is is what mankind is crying for you ever since adam and eve sinned two of the main things that they cry for is want and fears want and fears and yet in one chapter this gentleman has taken care of these two heavyweights and knocked them out of the park this this is smoking stuff here this is this is absolutely beautiful. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Stop right there. Wait, wait a minute. How many beautiful things can you have in one chapter? I, wait, wait, we're going to move on. It, 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 this, uh, whoo. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusteth in him. You. Let, let, let's go to 35. I wanted five, seven chapters a day, but... I don't know if we're going to get there, but, you know, I wanted 10 chapters a day. We're going to have probably a morning session and an evening session here for Bible study. And, uh, well, that's not in your time frame, but uh, uh, this is all day for us. All day, all day, all day. There's too many beautiful things here to move on. Too quickly, but we're going to move on. We'll be right back to this. As many of you can tell, we're going to we're going to we're going to park here five times a year, easy. We might make it more than that. As I begin to circle the heavy hitters here, um, as far as my matrix goes, fifty-two plus, we, we we could go all over the place here. Twenty-two is blessed the Lord. Obviously, th this man keeps talking about being blessed over and over again, and it's always relative to basically being forgiven and and respecting God for his position, uh, acknowledging who he is, um, declaring that there's only one person to boast in, and, 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 and rejoicing in this blessed state of being. Then he talks about the nation being blessed. Uh, he covers the waterfront here. We will always stay in these scriptures, uh, especially the book of Psalms and the red letters of his great-grandson. These will be our two mainstays. Then you add Paul to the mix, and you add John and so forth, and you're done as far as your, your pinnacle. You know, as far as your groundwork, this is your groundwork. As time goes on, I will refer to the, the matrix more and more. I, I will refer to the April matrix. Um, of course, which is putting concepts together. That's what he's doing here, but uh, he's not necessarily tying them together. I'm going to tie these things together for you as we really get into intermediate and advanced Bible study, okay? Where you tie these things together, such as um, the fear of the Lord re produces no want. And the fear of the Lord removes your fears. And that started with making a covenant. And that covenant w was for you to engage the same ground that God stands on, which is intelligence. And excellence. Excellence always picks the, the best thing for you. A saint, which he just used here, is a person who devotes themselves to holiness, and that holiness, devotion, is going to birth all of this uh, good things coming to you. Now, when we get to the New Testament, good things coming to you becomes a little more complicated. One man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good. We'll stop right there. That's a first Peter reference, but however, it, it, that's Peter referencing the scripture. And as you know, David and Isaiah are two of your main quotation uh, uh, sources. That's why we spend a lot of time in both of these books. But the point here is, is that 
you desire life in many days, uh, that, that is translated into abundant life and eternal life because Peter is going to be crucified upside down. So he's not getting many days and, and, many, and see many good days, is he? Not if he's getting cut off at age 50 or so. It looks like at about age 50, he's crucified upside down. So why would he tell you that you're going to love many good days? That's what he's saying. That's why we take these scriptures and we put them in, in the context of the master. And now these many days are applicable, first of all, to heaven and New Jerusalem. Sitting around the throne of, of Jesus Christ, who you love. That, that's what this is about. As far as getting good days and all of this, now that has been what? The narrative has changed. It's still applicable to your situation in your human body, but it's not applicable. Uh, it needs to be redefined. The application is different now. Okay, it, it might be common sense or it might be easy to understand that, um, you know, that, that it, it, it may apply to your life. But that's based upon the sovereignty of God. And he maketh me lie down, he leadeth me. So now that, that takes this over, doesn't it? This is not the bottom line. This is what's known as subtext to the main text. And what's the main text? The main text is, is that you may add promise. Uh, that's the best case scenario is for you to add promise to your life, living a good, righteous life. But that's, that's, that's the ceiling. You can't say, I'm going to get this or get that. You can't do that. James chapter 5. What you ought to say is whether, whatever the Lord's will is. It doesn't negate this, this, uh, this scripture, uh, Psalm 34, 12, but it, it redefines it and clarifies it. You see, the devil might take this scripture and say, start a doctrine that this is, this is the way God, God deals with you. If you do good, you get good. And that can be called Catholicism, uh, Jehovah's Witnessism, uh, Mormonism, uh, Scientology, um, Hinduism. In other words, most of the people in the world believe that you get good because you behave good. Now, th that's a generalization that actually can apply to your life. However, it's not the bottom line, and that's not where we start. Where we start is with James, whatever, whatever the will of the Lord is. Because first of all, uh, if, if God should count iniquity, who could stand? And that goes back to 32 we just left, which is, happy is the man whom the Lord does not put iniquity on. You sinned, you own that. You own that sin. But you're happy because God's not going to place that sin on you. And that's based upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. And that's why it's not going to be applied to you. And you're covered with the garments of salvation. You have the robe of righteousness. So that's Yom Kippara. Nobody can see your sins because God's not placing them on you. He placed them on his son. And so therefore, that's the reason why no one knows you have any sin. Because they're gone. However, it gets a little dicey when you start getting into John, or rather, let's mention James, rather, uh, pertaining to uh, the first thing you do is seek the will of the Lord. You don't go around boasting about many days. That's dangerous. What you can say is that, that, that what is a man that desireth and uh, love many days, that he may see good. So the operative word here is may. So we're talking about optimizing your life, and that's very simply uh, stated here. That's not that difficult to understand, okay? And that, and that of course, goes into uh, using evil words. I, I turned my cable on here, they had a movie, and, and they were using the Lord's name in vain, and they were cursing. So these kind of movies a Bible teacher actually can't watch. I can't really watch these movies. And the point is, is that... Uh, 
you, you can't speak these, these words. Let's move on to 35. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Now, let's, go, let's get down to verse 9. And my Lord shall be joyful, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in, in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivereth the poor from him that, that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. Economic exploitation is noted here, and it is noted well. One of the problems of capitalism, of course, is the abuse of the poor. God's going to hold them accountable. Capitalists in general allow people who are rich to abuse the poor. However, they will pay for their abuse. America is a capitalist country, and we pray and preach for, that we're not into people's business. Basically, we go to church, and, and if, God, if this guy over here is abusing his workers, we're not going to say really anything about it. We're going to pray and let God fix his wagon. Vengeance is his. He will repay, saith the Lord. Let's go to verse 11, which is obviously a cross-reference to anyone in a kangaroo court where somebody is, is lying and bearing false witness. False witnesses did, did rise up. They laid to charge things that I knew not. That's our lovable Jesus Christ in his kangaroo court there. On the night of his, the early day of Friday there, of the crucifixion, where they're lying and saying he did this and did that. And, uh, and of course, they were coerced and probably paid. Who knows? And they rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. So Jesus Christ is 100% man and 100% God, and this really uh, bothered him and vexed his soul, his human soul, because people are lying about him. In other words, I, I, you might say that the, that the Lord is very irritated by these liars. One of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And I saw them breaking the commandment here in the movie here the other day, uh, saying Christ for, for not having mustard or something, you know, or something. Oh, Christ, dude. When we say the word Christ, we say the word Christ in reverence. Jesus Christ, the Master, the Savior. The ruler of my heart, the apple of my eye. That's how we say Jesus. Let's go to verse 18. I will give thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them, let them wink with the eye and hate me without a cause. Verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of his, thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. The Lord will have pleasure in you prospering of his servant. You say, Jeremiah, you keep saying the word servant is monstrous. You'll notice every time you see the word servant, things get very, very, very significant. Servant is probably the prime term for living bread which came down out of heaven. 
that if any man eat this servant bread, he will never see death. Learn to be the servant, the master said. We're learning to be servants, and that's how you get your prosperity. The same goes for adoption. The reason why the master focuses on servanthood basically all the time is because it automatically births everything. It, it, it's what gives you prosperity. It, 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 it's, what, it, it's what prospers your soul. So that your soul is hammered home and rooted and rooted in heaven. You're, you're creating a tapestry of a home for your soul. It's springing up into eternal life. Okay? And all you got to do is magnify the Lord here, and we're shouting for joy, and be glad. Yes, we are, because, because God is going to take care of you, Mr. David, and all the Christian brethren. If we all magnify him together in a great, in a great horde, in a great assembly, And we're going to rejoice in the individual prosperity of every servant. And it all comes from the servanthood. It all comes from you acknowledging that you are a servant. That he's the master and you're the servant. Okay? That's what's going to birth this pleasure. Because there's no pleasure without prosperity. And there's no prosperity without servanthood. Without a scribe, serious, a serious student. The master said, a scribe entering in. He emphasizes in the parable of the sower, Bible study, uh, humongous here. This is big. Bible study. Okay, we'll be right back with more coming your way. Maranatha, 